Thanks for inviting us along uh, here tonight to talk to you about this. Um, Alistair, Alistair Houghton's quite right that we are in fact in a, a wonderful building now, the old uh, Rapid, which was um, transformed by the biennial, um, particularly by uh, Lorenzo Fusi, um, for the Touched exhibition. Um, what I'm here to talk to you about is uh, why bright light shining in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just stand out of the way of the projector. Um, what I'm here to talk to you about really is you know, how Liverpool Biennial first really started to grasp um, the wonderful opportunity presented by social media. Uh, and in many ways how um, we aren't experts. Um, some people like Alistair are pretty expert. Um, we've worked with other experts and we've just tried to slowly really, I guess, build, uh, build a community, get some ideas working. Um, and, you know, I guess what I'd really like to do um, is take questions um, after I've been through a few slides uh, and then just talk about you know, maybe how well you think we're doing um, and I guess really any other of pointers that you all might have because I'm assuming <laughs> you're all users and, and most people here because it's social media and either you know a lot and you want to see if you can learn some more or you're just beginning to learn and you're hoping to do just that. Anyway, this is Alistair Beach who unfortunately is not mic'd up whereas I'm double mic'd up so it seems a bit of a bit of an imposition but let's move on swiftly. So the first thing I wanted to just talk about really was where we started. And, and we actually started with social media mainly because of what was happening outside of Liverpool Biennial. It was just one of those great um, moments when we were um, getting ready to launch uh, Richard Wilson's sculpture, Turning the Place Over. Do most people know that? Okay, I probably won't dip into the, the YouTube footage for that then. Um, so that was somebody passing by uh, and grabbing some camera phone video uh, and, uh, <laughs> and uploading it. Um, and very quickly, um, that video footage uh, started to uh, attract a lot of interest. Um, and certainly within um, a very uh, short space of time, it was attracting you know 25,000 hits then 50 and then and it and doubled and all of that um, and of course somebody like myself uh, who's head of marketing and communications still fairly new to um, the potential of social media um, realized that it was something really worth harnessing and thinking about um, but like all these things that are, are new and um, difficult to, to position and contain, and that's what's so brilliant about social media. It just happens, um, and you've got to kind of ride with the, the waves of enthusiasm uh, and make things work for yourself. So um, 2008 there, we tried, uh, tried to um, not repeat what happened with turning the place over, um, but to you know, use a bit of video which we'd shot ourselves, put it up on YouTube, to start talking about um, Liverpool Biennial's uh, Made Up exhibition in 2008. Um, and we used the Arboris Lighti um, installation. Are you all familiar with that? Maybe not. Just I'll just show that quickly. <coughs> slowly <coughs> turning trees. Um, and they're still there, but they're not currently turning because we're still carrying out maintenance. So I guess the question is, you know, why do we bother? <laughs> because, you know, previously we'd had a strong marketing presence um, and we'd uh, been able to achieve you know, high numbers of visitors. Um, but clearly, you know, you've got to say to yourself at some point, um, here's something new, 
we're an organization that deals with the contemporary, so contemporary art. Um, we want to look at the cutting edge. We want to um, find better ways. Um, one of our sort of in internal um, mantras is go further. Um, so each campaign we undertake, we want to look at ways of making it go further for us, go further for our audiences, um, and to keep spreading the word about Liverpool Biennial um, and the artworks that we commission. So obviously, um, social media, it's, it's people, it's ideas, um, it's images, it's quick fire um, opportunities, whether they're, they're video or photographic. Um, and in many ways, it also starts to solve those little conundrums when you realize you've, you've signed up to uh, marketing objectives where you've got to guarantee 20 million um, people seeing your messages. Um, and of course, the, there's that uh, strange uh, collection of uh, words there. Um, Realising 10,000 meaningful relationships. Um, take that as far as you want. But um, the important thing for us was that it's going back to that word engagement. Um, and then, of course, it also struck us that this could be a really useful way of doing something that, you know, not that we particularly struggle, but certainly outside of the festival time we'd struggle to do, and that's actually drive people to, to our website. Um, you know, the, the World Wide Web is just busy, busy, and um, it's very difficult to, um, to shout louder sometimes. Um, you can update your site, you can, um, you know, uh, put on uh, great images, great news stories, but even so, people are just not finding it. It's needle in a haystack time. So one of the most important things then is trying to harness the power of social media to carry out straightforward SEO work, particularly you know where budgets are tight um, and you're not able to spend um, the money that I know lots of corporations spend in trying to do that. Um, just thought I'd move forward to um, the other really important thing, which is the, the conversation we wanted to have as an organisation. Um, you know, normally the front the front page of any conversation we have is it's about the art and it's about the artists that make the art. Um, but equally, because we are about engaging art people in place, it is about driving the. Um, the kind of conversations that people want to have, need to have, um, because that is fueled by people's own personal interests, enthusiasm, um, and we can take that forward. So developing the brand personality is, can we do that? You know, that's something that it, it takes a long time for an organisation to, to do um, in the past. And maybe these days, using social media, using these conversations, whether that's Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, uh, moving forward, building on those core values there, being inclusive, creative, fun, and having courage. So um, where we started, we started with one person, Sean Hawkridge. Um, recognizing that we needed to have a Facebook page, we needed to have a Twitter account. Um, we set up our first Twitter account uh, in 2008, and to be honest, we did very little with it. We just didn't have the time. Um, and so it's taken us a huge amount of time with the support um, of other organizations. Um, but Twitter has been the one thing that's I guess won, won the war, if you like, against naysayers, people that think this is just a bit of a, bit of a laugh. <laughs> um, but it's not a laugh when you realize that you can talk to um, three or 4,000 people for us really, really quickly. Um, and you can deal with people on, on quite an, an individual basis. Um, just a little illustration there of the types of people. Um, 
So in terms of our um, engagement with social media, we've got Facebook, Flickr, Twitter, YouTube, etc. Um, in some ways, the kind of activity we do, it's what you'd normally expect. It's the um, the usual things, the kind of news and announcements, uh, photography, invitation to dialogue, the videos. Um, but actually, <laughs> this was us learning to, to try and, and work around this using kind of old style marketing ideas and not really engaging with the possibility of it. Um, oops, right, there we go. Um, and so you then start to think, well, we need real content. We need, we need something that, that's going to mark us out, that's going to demonstrate that we're not just in it just to use it as another channel. Um, and so very simply, we try and, and, and do the things like this thousandth follower, thousandth tweet. I mean, these are all simple, obvious ideas, really. Um, but the last one there, the innovation, um, which happened uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, was a much longer term project, uh, took a lot more resources um, and was something that um, I guess, uh, yeah, was conceived really in partnership with uh, Hope Street Limited as uh, basically an online creative project um, that was created to be the expression for a time of our social media activity. Um, and in many ways, this chimed with me with some of the research that we did after 2008 when um, we were exploring ways of driving, um, driving the uh, social media activities forward, um, looking at other examples. Um, so there was a an example of a project run by um, run by the VNA, looking at interesting people in their Cold War exhibition, uh, and they use social media, developing online personalities, um, creating uh, a narrative based around spying, um, and they took uh, about three months, perhaps a bit longer to do that, um, probably engaged with 250, 300 people and ended up with about 30 people turning up uh, at an opening um, for the, the Cold War exhibition, uh, not knowing particularly, I mean, I, I imagine they found out <laughs> fairly swiftly once they'd got the final clues, but the, the destination was, was not clear they'd been engaged using social media as a, as a kind of game, but as a kind of long game of um, trying to see whether uh, using uh, the fact that people are online uh, and most interested in, in online to then transfer that interest in, um, to something, you know, an activity, in this case the exhibition, that they weren't particularly um, interested in going to beforehand because it related to them. Um, our simple strategy, um, particularly when it comes to um, Twitter and Facebook, which are the, the main things that we concentrate on, it's really about trying to increase those followers and friends, but increasing the quality and volume of engagement, and then setting simple targets, you know, obvious kind of marketing approaches. Uh, the hardest bit, of course, is sustaining that as an activity. And this is where Alistair Beach, uh, Alistair used to work with Juice Digital, and we first got to know Juice um, at the back end of 2008, early 2009. Um, and that's when we made the decision that we just didn't know enough uh, about social media, how we could really use it, um, what were the uh, quick routes to tools and techniques. We didn't really have a lot of money, so um, we needed to devise a, a, a very cost-effective program. Um, well, I feel a bit cruel now because Alistair's standing there, unmiked up. Um, uh, take the 
Swap Fantastic. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, is that is that okay? Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So, um, I picked up. Um, the, the kind of biennial activity around the festival, um, this year's festival. Um, I'd say in the in June, July this year, and um, worked very closely with Anthony and Mary from the biennial uh, marketing team. And we had our targets, as Anthony has uh, as, as pointed out before. Um, and for me, and I think for, for the biennial, it's very interesting to um, look at this festival as probably the first festival that's that's used social media and um, has harnessed has, has been able to harness uh, social media. Um, most people now have a smartphone or have a web-enabled phone, so it's very easy for people to um, upload images, content, and also talk about um, what they're seeing out there. Um, so, just to run through kind of what what I've done for Biennial. Um, you know, the, the increase in followers was great, um, but what's also important is the, the level of the engagement and the quality of that. You know, a lot of social media specialists will come in and tell you you need uh, 15,000 followers, but um, they don't really, that doesn't really matter if you're not engaging most people. You would, it's, it's, it's better to have, a f say, 5,000 and engage them properly. Um, so it's about the quality of your conversations and, and the quality of your connections because it is, in essence, about relationships. Uh, so I guess the same uh, tactic was employed on, on Flick, um, sorry, Facebook. Um, great increase, 79% increase in friends and, and likes on there and I think Facebook um, is obviously you know love it or hate it but it's it's a huge platform and it's one that Biennial uh, started off on and needed to carry on with uh, that's a quite interesting graph on our uh, gaining of followers during the festival um, you can see a massive increase um, between the 10th and the 16th of October and a massive increase on the opening weekend of the festival. Um, some examples there of some of the conversations on Twitter. Um, Ed Vasey at the top uh, gave us a good sort of uh, write up there and just uh, at the bottom, it's kind of, you know, we wanted a snapshot of, of what we try to do on Twitter. You know, um, we obviously try to answer queries daily, um, you know, give people a kind of customer service, if anything, you know. Um, if they answer, qu answer a question, it needs answering. Great. <laughs> I mean, for me, the question is, you know, where do we go from here? Um, meeting you all here tonight is one way of, of moving this forward because clearly you're a room full of people who are going to know probably a lot more about all this than, than we do. Um, but also a sense of, you know, where do we fit in in terms of, in terms of Liverpool, in terms of the UK, in terms of Europe, etc., etc. Um, I mean, we know that um, in terms of our followers, we're sort of behind organisations like Tate Liverpool uh, and FACT. The only things that we've done, we think, are specific activities uh, like, for example, the, um, the Innovation, the live action role play game, which is just one kind of tactic, really. Um, we've also had uh, a blogging competition, because one of the things that um, I learned very early on, which was that um, 
The Biennial really wants to be seen as an organisation that is, is at home with debate, debate around contemporary art in particular. And uh, how could we possibly do that if we didn't have a kind of bona fide sort of discussion forum board? Um, and one way of doing that is by blogging um, and then you know, ob obviously encouraging people to comment. That's still not as successful as I would like it to be. Um, and it's still not achieving um, the kind of interaction that I'd really, really like to see. Um, but I guess it's still early days because the other side of this is that, you know, naysayers, you know, within the organisation or the kind of marketing control freakery inside my head, it's really, um, it's really critical at the moment that we understand where social media can take us uh, in ways that you know, previous marketing activity uh, couldn't take us before. And obviously there's that whole international um, aspect, there's the, the timeliness, you know, just the speed of it. Um, and maybe, uh, maybe one of the other issues is how brave are we going to be? Um, you know, previously the biennial has, uh, I guess, operated in a very tightly focused PR f format. Uh, we've not easily put our head above the parapet, said things, and perhaps got things a bit wrong. Um, and it's a lot easier to do that with social media. Um, but at the same time, I also recognise that, you know, if we're quick enough to respond and to take people seriously, sometimes things are just misinterpreted. Um, so we've got to think, all the marketing material that we've produced in the past, all the um, information on our websites, that may all have been misinterpreted at some point. It's just that people haven't had the opportunity or the technology to explain that. So suddenly we've got all this information coming back um, and it's just really, really useful. Um, and I guess I would like us to get braver and braver with it so that you know, we can have the kind of difficult discussions, um, not quite bordering on arguments, but certainly, you know, strong views being held and batted around. And that, for me, is the whole point of it. It's an opportunity to really engage with the people who love what we do. Um, and we want to continue doing that and continue doing it better. And if social media can do that, all to the good. Um, I guess we could move to questions or yeah. How important do you think it is to set targets? Um, because I'm head of Web Design Arts Organisation in Liverpool, not similar to the NER, so it's more yep. performing arts. And the way I kind of think about them is I focus more on organic growth and conversation than how many followers we have. I know that you seem to be quite have quite set targets there. I mean, has that worked out for you? Or well, it has at the moment in that we set targets that we thought were realistic. Um, as it happens with uh, Twitter, with, um, we're pretty close. With Facebook, we've exceeded. So I think that's, that's interesting. Um, yeah, clearly it, it allows me to have an idea in my head about you know, where things are going so that when people say to me, you know, what are you spending your time on in particular in terms of resources, uh, then we've got an answer um, and we've got a way of, of gauging how, how things will change, you know, so that, you know, only having um, 1,000 uh, Twitter followers as against having over 4,000, you know, what else can we do? Um, and that, you know, just because setting a target means that you're, you're moving forward um, doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, say we'd set a target of 15,000, uh, we would be really disappointed at the moment. And I think, you know, it's, it's not crucial because you've got to grow as an organisation and you've also got to realise that with the biennial, you know, one of the, one of the critical, critical 
positives about social media is that it's a way of carrying on a lively, uh, content-driven, um, useful campaign year-round. So when you know we're in the uh, the off year, as it were, when we're not producing the festival, we're still doing other projects, but they're not necessarily as visible. Um, to the public because they're, they're not always aimed directly at the wider general public. Sometimes they're, they're working with particular communities. Um, last year we did a bit of work uh, around the um, Leeds to Liverpool Canal, around Bootle, and we tried to um, begin the process of, uh, I guess, just increasing um, targets there. But it was hard, um, much harder. I mean, clearly we're using this opportunity of the, the kind of joined up qualities of uh, a marketing uh, and PR campaign to, to drive it. So I would always set a target. How did you come up with those targets? Well, uh, it's partly, it's partly on, well, talking to people like Alistair, who, you know, it's, it's looking at, organizations that you think you should be competing with so you can see how many followers they have how many um, fans they have uh, on Facebook um, and just taking it from there really so it you know it's as much about positioning your organization um, I, my background is in video game development, and I don't know if you know anything about video games, but our whole industry is moving towards utilizing social media in a much bigger way. Our audience is already tech savvy, so it's a, it's a natural fit for us. Yeah. I was really interested to hear that you have already operated a, an alternate reality game. Yeah. Um, did you? How did you do it, first of all? Um, where did the idea come from? Did you find it useful? a useful investment of your time? The idea came because I wanted to do a treasure hunt and I got laughed out of the office. <laughs> Nobody's going to be interested in a treasure hunt. So I thought, right, I'm going to find myself a spanky new way of doing a treasure hunt. Um, and got talking to people. Um, and uh, in particular, um, there's a, a group of people, and the name's just gone out of my head, uh, Alex Fleetwood at... No, it's a festival. Anyway, um, th they've been doing projects, um, particularly linking up um, kind of adult play with theatre. So they've been working like th with theatre companies like Punch Drunk. Um, and we spoke to them ab about the possibility of devising a game. And it, it, you know, to be perfectly honest, it was just out of our league in terms of being able to raise the money to do it. Um, so we were looking at having to raise 30 to 40 grand just to create that experience. Um, now that is really top end um, and you will get a lot of gain for your money. Um, we decided to take a slightly different approach and because we're an international festival I was always naturally drawn to the idea of working with um, games creators from outside the UK. Uh, and there seemed to be a bigger market in, in terms of Germany in particular. Um, so again, through contacts at, at Juice, um, we managed to make contact with uh, Carsten and Larsen, um, who spend a lot of their free time creating um, live action role play games. Um, and this was a challenge for them because um, normally they have people running around dressed as trolls with kind of huge swords and things like that um, in forests. Uh, but they were drawn to the idea, not only to work with us, but to work with um, Hope Street Limited and their um, theatre training scheme. The, the, the they have worked with about 20 apprentices. Um, so it's a way of just kind of pulling together resources that you know we could count on, trying to keep the cost down a bit, and then just taking it from there. Um, <laughs> We would have liked to have had an online kind of video game version, um, <coughs> but again, you know, it just wasn't feasible uh, with the kind of amount of time we had left to um, raise the money, develop the project. 
um, so we ended up with uh, a game taking place you know, uh, between 10 and 6 on a Saturday, um, 9th of October. And we had 56 players signed up um, playing on the day. Um, and the other benefit of working with Hope Street was that there was a bit of spectacle for people to look at. And we recruited people uh, to play the game online. Um, we set a target. Um, we wanted 100 people. We didn't get 100 people signed up to play the game. We cheated because there were over 40 people involved in making the game work. So already, you know, it's, it's, it's not really stacking up, is it? But the brilliant thing was that it, it was doing something new. It, it, it only worked because those people had come together, had followed um, breadcrumb trails, gone through rabbit holes on the web to start you know, piecing together something that was of interest to them. And that to me is what it's about. It's about you know, connecting with people. Um, and we'd love to do it again. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll find a way. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.